Hi, my name is Ian McGregor and I want to take you through a masterclass on Newton's first law of motion. This follows my video which you'll find on YouTube where Professor Mack explains Newton's first law of motion. So as an introduction, Newton's first law of motion considers two things. It considers forces and it considers the way in which forces affect the motion of objects. And Professor Mack introduces this uh, as this, at the start of the video, uh, where he explains that the law is all around forces and the way those forces affect objects. So there are two aspects to Newton's first law of motion that you really need to understand if you want to successfully apply the law to solve problems and to apply that when you're doing your examinations. The first of these is balanced forces. Uh, this is where forces on an object are in balance and in this case you can see that the force in the top of the block here is the same as the force on the bottom of the block. Uh, therefore they balance each other out. When you add these up they are the same size but they act in opposite directions and so they balance each other out. So when we have balanced forces what you see in objects is that there's no change in motion. If the object is stationary, it remains stationary. It doesn't start moving. However, and Professor Matt shows this later on in a video and it's quite surprising, is that if the object is moving and their forces are on it but they're in balance, then it will continue to move. It will continue to move in the same direction and it will continue to move with constant speed. And that's when we say the object has constant velocity. So the key thing is balance forces result in no change in motion. The object either stays stationary or it continues to move with constant speed and constant direction. The second thing is about unbalanced forces. And Professor Mack goes on to explain this in the video. Now, the way he does this is he introduces an experiment. And in the experiment, he has a block of wood, which he places down on a table. Now, this table is quite a special table in that it is very, very smooth. You can see it's highly polished. You can see the reflections on the surface. And it means that for all practical purposes, the table doesn't resist the motion of the object. And when we have a, a surface like that, we call it a frictionless surface. It has zero friction. There is no friction to resist the movement of the object. And that's important when we do the experiment because it allows us to look at a special case where zero friction is applying and that lets us understand the uh, first law. So unbalanced forces. What are they all about? Well, when you have unbalanced forces on an object, you will see the motion of the object changing. It starts moving if it was stationary, or if it was moving, you can also see it change its speed. It'll accelerate or it'll decelerate, get faster or slower, or it'll change direction. And in all those cases, it's a result of an unbalanced force or a system of forces acting in such a way that there's an unbalanced force. So here we have an example of such a system where you have the block of wood, you have a vertical force acting down, a vertical force acting up, and you have a force acting to the right which is pushing the block. Now these two forces balance each other out. This force here has nothing to balance it, so we would expect that object to move to the right. So that's the two elements of the law. It's about forces and objects. It's about how forces affect the motion of an object. If you have balanced forces, then there's no change in motion. And you have un if you have unbalanced forces, there will be a change in motion. So you'll see this when you have a look at the video, if you haven't already seen it. Um, for the case of the balance forces, Professor Mack shows the forces 
from gravity and also the force, the reaction force from the table onto the block. This force, this reaction force, is a result of Newton's third law of motion. So you can look at my video on third law of motion and you will see uh, how that appears and what, why, why it's there. You also see that uh, during the video that uh, Professor Mack introduces an unbalanced force through the application of a piston force. And the piston force essentially is like this force I showed you over here. It's acting to the right on the block of wood. We still have the two vertical forces, but they continue to be in balance. So the object doesn't fly up or down. It stays vertically stationary. But because of the action of the force to the right, and it's an unbalanced force, the object starts to move towards the right. And you can see it moving along the surface as it moves there, you can see the forces vertically don't change. And in fact, once it's left the piston, there's no horizontal force acting there. This is this point here, which is actually quite a difficult point to grasp, is that if the forces are balanced and the object is already moving, then it will continue to move with constant velocity. And this is exactly that case here. Um, what we have here is that the vertical forces are in balance, so the object, in this case the piece of wood, doesn't jump up or go down. But also you can see there are no forces acting horizontally. Remember we said that this table surface is very smooth, it doesn't resist the motion of the object. And therefore the object continues to move with constant velocity constant speed, constant direction. And the amazing thing is that because there is no force acting horizontally, this object would continue to move forever. If the table was long enough, it would just continue to move along the table without slowing down, without increasing speed, without changing direction, because the forces horizontally are essentially balanced to zero. There are zero forces the sum of the forces are zero and therefore we have a balanced force on it and therefore it continues to move with constant velocity. So there you go, that's Newton's first law of motion. Just remember it's about forces and the way in which the forces affect the motion of objects. You've got two things to think about and you do that by summing up the forces on the object. You sum the forces up if they're balanced and cancel each other out, then the object will not change its motion. It will stay stationary, if it's already stationary, or it will continue to move with constant velocity. If you sum the forces up and you find that they're unbalanced, then you'll see that the object will change its motion. It will start moving or it will slow down if it's already moving. It will change direction. Also, if the object is change, if the forces are such that it changes the direction of movement, and this is all to do with a change in velocity. The important thing to to understand is that if you sum up the forces, in this case, you can sum the forces here. You'll see that because the unbalanced force is acting to the right, the object will start moving to the right. So when you do this assessment of the forces and you get an unbalanced force. If it's acting to the right, it will change the motion of the object to the right. So that's a very nice thing to understand because it helps you understand why objects are moving the way they are moving. So there you go, that's Newton's first law of motion. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found out more about the law and if you haven't seen my video then I hope you go off and have a look at it because it will explain all these points in more detail. So for me, Ian McGregor, until next time, all the best. Bye.